Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. This week, Colin, through the programmes, you have really been explaining in the simplest terms what faith is all about. And uh, you made the point at the beginning of the week that we cannot both be in the driving seat. We cannot be driving the car as well as Christ. If he's in us, he will enable us, even if we're feeling weak. So it's maintaining that attitude and seeing the victory. It is. And this word victory is a difficult word for some Christians because they feel that they live in failure and defeat and that victory is beyond them. Well, I want to assure you that victory isn't beyond you if Christ is in you because the one thing that Christ cannot do is fail. And if you put your trust in him, then you cannot fail. The only time you will fail is when you don't put your trust in him and you trust in yourself instead. Now, what is the real problem? I mean, if it is as simple as I've made it sound this week, why don't we all live in victory in every situation that confronts us? Well, the main problem is that most Christians believe their feelings rather than believe Christ being in them. They listen to their feelings. You see, you can't feel Christ in you. You can't feel his power. Uh, It's got nothing to do with feelings. Remember the question that we looked at yesterday, that we've got to test ourselves to see whether we are in the faith or not. And we saw that you pass the test if you believe that Jesus Christ is in you, and therefore you are trusting in him. But you fail the test if you are still trusting in yourself, in your feelings, in your fears, in your doubts, in your own thoughts, because your thoughts can contradict what God says in his word. When we trust ourselves, we strive, we struggle, we strain to do things in our own weakness rather than in the power of God. So it's learning that Christ is in me no matter how I feel. That Christ will give me the victory if I trust him, irrespective of how I feel or what I think or of any of the fears or doubts that may try to attack me in the middle, especially of a particularly difficult situation. What did we see right at the beginning of the week? It's not I, but Christ. So if it's not I, then it's not my feelings, it's not my thoughts, it's not my opinions, it's not my way, it's not my will, it's Christ in me. The trouble with a lot of people is that they put their faith in their feelings rather than their faith in what the Word of God says about the life of Christ within us. Now, the scripture is clear. God has given to every man the measure of faith. And the writer to Hebrews says that Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. So then, God, when you were, when you were born again, God gave you the faith for every possible situation that could ever arise in your life. He gave you the measure of faith that you need. You don't need a bigger faith, a stronger faith. God gave you the faith. Jesus said you only need faith the size of a mustard seed to shift a mountain. That's a major need, isn't it? So you have the faith. The point is, where do you put that faith? In yourself, in your feelings, in your fears, in your doubts, in your own thoughts, in your opinions, or do you put that faith in Christ in you, in which case you disregard what you feel and your own opinions and all your own weaknesses and you trust him. Lord Jesus Christ, you come through in this situation. 
You resolve this. You speak. You work. You just l- show me and lead me what to do. And of course, he would do that if we trust him, because he wants to work in us and through us. This is his will. This is the way that he intends it to be in our lives. Just as we saw yesterday, that in Jesus. Jesus was saying, "Not my words, but the Father's. Not my actions, but the Father. Not my will, but the Father." He lived by the same principle because he was showing us how to live in a way that will please God within the limitations of a human life. And so we've simply got to apply the same principles that Jesus lived by. Jesus said, "Not I, but the Father. Not I, but the Father. Not I, but the Father." So we do the same thing, and we say, "Not I, but Christ. Not I, but Christ. Not I, but Christ." And Christ will speak through us, even when we don't know what to say. So long as we say, "Lord, this is beyond me. I don't understand. I don't know how to answer this. I don't know how to cope with it." You give me the words to say. You just show me what to do. Jesus, of course, told his disciples about this. He said, "People are going to persecute you. They're going to bring you before courts. They'll bring you before kings and authorities, and in that time, you will not know what to say." He said, "But don't worry. The Holy Spirit will give you the words to say." In other words, he said, "Don't be fearful. Don't look at the circumstances. Don't wonder how on earth you're going to cope in such a trying situation. Just trust me." You know, he says, "Trust in God. Trust also in me, didn't he? Trust me, and the Holy Spirit will give you the words to speak." It's the same principle. See, it's the principle of faith by which God is calling us all to live. Now, there is a particular way in which those of us who are British find this quite difficult, because there's that British bulldog spirit. I've got to do it. I've got to accomplish. I've got to achieve. There must be something that I can do to contribute towards this, whatever the situation may be. But what can you contribute compared with what Christ can do in you and through you? It's, it's going to be much better. Of course, He's going to use you. He'll use your voice to speak to others. But if He gives you the words to speak, those words are going to be very much more effective than anything that comes from yourself, from your own ideas, your own opinions, or your own understanding. Because His understanding is so much greater. His ways are higher than our ways. So as you trust Him, Lord Jesus, you know, I, when you have really difficult things to do. You do that, don't you? You pray. You say, "Lord, I, I just don't know what to do." You, but we usually say, "Help me!" And in His mercy, He does. But how much better it's going to be when you say, "Not I, but Christ." Lord, you do it. You speak through me. You work through me. And you find, you see, that when you trust God in that way, He comes good. He is faithful. He is true to His word and to His promises. It's a little bit like learning to swim, isn't it? We have to one day take our feet off the bottom. That's right, and once you've once you've taken the first few strokes and you realise that you don't sink and drown, then you can swim forever and a day, whenever you like, and、uh, that is what the the life of faith is is all about. But you see, there are lots of lots of you listening to me now. You have got difficult situations. You've been trying to resolve for a long time, and I'm sure that many of you have been praying about a situation, praying about a mountain of need in your life, and you wonder why things haven't changed. And perhaps if you've listened to these programs this week, you realise well, you've been trying to do it. You've been straining and struggling and striving in prayer or whatever, whatever. Uh, whatever else you've been doing, and God is just speaking to you this very simple message: not I, but Christ. My weakness doesn't matter. Trusting in myself, me trying to do it, has failed. Now, Lord, over to you. I'm not going to try any more. I'm going to give up trying, and instead, I'm going to trust you. And I trust you in this situation. And I release your power and your life, Lord. Fulfill your word and give me the victory in this situation, because you are my victory, you are my life, you are my power, you are my holiness, you are my righteousness, you are 
as Paul puts it, my all in all. And I trust you. And you know, that's the kind of faith that God loves. And you'd be surprised how when you begin to trust God in that way, suddenly the situation begins to change. Things that have been stuck for weeks, months, even years begin to change. And you begin to get a totally different attitude. You get what I've been talking about these last few weeks, a faith attitude to every situation that confronts you. But the essence of this faith attitude is simply this. Not I, but Christ. Because I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So just as those things were true for Paul, they're true for me, and they're true for you. And it's also true to say, for God to say to you, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. Don't trust in your weakness. Trust in me. Trust in my power. You can examine yourself to see if you are in the faith. Test yourself. Do you not know that Christ Jesus is in you? You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 